the penultimate day of 2018 and um, this bike is going back over to street bike in Helsone because we have a problem the first time with this bike with the onboard Kellex charger um, it has done what many of them do and uh, decided to stop working well the actual the actual symptoms are um, plug it into charge, plug the bike into charge, flick the switch on and the consumer unit trips, the fuse blows if it were an old fuse box type setup. Now there is a way around this and that is to use a uh, a lead which is wired up without the earth connection and that does get around it but the charger ultimately is not working as it should. I don't fancy charging longer term without the earth connection, doesn't seem like a good idea and so it's going to go back. It's still under warranty, so that charge is going to be replaced. And it does make me think longer term, seriously consider what I'm going to do in terms of the charger strategy. More on that later. So, off I went on the 30th of December to return the bike to Street Bike in Helsoin. Ordinarily, with something like this, they'd send out a van to pick up the bike. And I could have waited for them to do that, but in the event, because I had a method of charging using an earthless cable, I thought I could charge the bike up and then ride it over to Hailsoen so that it was ready for them to start work on as soon as the workshop opened back up. Otherwise I might have been waiting some time into the new year before the bike was even looked at. And so I was followed by my daughter driving our Nissan Leaf, so we had a nice little EV convoy going over to Hailsoen. And we got there, I dropped the bike off and then we both came back together in the Leaf. Now I did actually record a commentary as I was taking the bike back to street bike but unfortunately I managed somehow to pull the microphone out of the socket and was left with very little other than a bit of wind noise. And so this commentary is done from behind the comfort of my desk. Which is actually quite a sensible way of doing a commentary and it may be something I do in future. To sum up then what had happened I'd taken the bike out for a ride, the roads were a bit wet, I'd returned home and I'd washed the bike, then dried it, and then plugged it into charge. Once I initiated the charge, the home consumer unit tripped, the RCD, and this then happened on subsequent attempts. Every time I tried to charge the bike, the consumer unit tripped and turned off all the electrics in the house. So clearly there was something somehow wrong somewhere, and something was causing a short. My best bet is that somehow water had got into the charging unit or more likely not into the charging unit but somehow it caused a short in the connecting wires and this is quite a common problem seemingly. Now you've heard me refer to it as a Calex charger. Well Calex Manufacturing Company Incorporated are actually the owners of Greenwatt Power and the charger itself on my Zero DSR, the 2016 model, and uh, other bikes of that era are um, actually made by Greenwatt Power, which is a division of Calex. I'd always assumed that these chargers were actually not fit for purpose, potentially, because they had a record of failing with many Zero owners over time. It's it's become one of the things, there's almost like an attitude of treating it like a consumable from a lot of Zero owners' point of view. In fact, I know of people who have actually taken them out of the bike completely because they'd rather save the weight than carry that weight around thinking, well, it's a potentially, it's, a, it's an item that potentially fails and therefore, you know, I don't, I don't need it on the bike. For me, that's potentially problematic unless you've got an external means of charging, such as a, via the accessory port or through the charge tank, for instance. That's quite a high risk thing to do because if for any reason you do actually run out of power on the side of the road you've got no means of obviously charging the bike whereas I usually take a lead along with me in the back of the bike and in a very worst case scenario if I run out of power all I need to do is find an electrical socket that's not something you can do so easily with a petrol or diesel vehicle of course however as I say these have had a bit of a history with owners and I've had three in total on me in about two and a half years. So 
it's something of a problem and it's it's a problem that's known to zero of course themselves they ultimately have to foot the bill of replacing these because they generally go while the bikes under warranty and so i just thought i'd take a look on greenwatt power's website to try and find out a little bit more about the charger the charger is rated at 1.3 kilowatts so that's 1300 watts now interestingly in terms of waterproof protection they are actually rated at ip65 from what i can see the most commonly found ip ratings are ip65 66 67 and 68 and each of those two digits represent a level of in, in the case of the first digit it's intrusion protection and in the second digit it's moisture protection so ip65 the six means it's protected against dust that may harm equipment and the five means that it's protected against water spray from all directions. If we look at the placement of the charger on the Zero motorbike, it's actually underneath the battery in a belly pan. And the back of it faces towards the motor. But the back is open and exposed. Of course, this ordinarily wouldn't be a problem because we're riding forwards and the spray tends to come from the front of the bike towards the back. However, there is a possibility that moisture is going to get into the back of the bike. And while the protection against water ingress, i.e. 5, which is protection against water jets, sounds reasonable, there are actually three levels of protection beyond that. So level 6 gives protection against powerful water jets, 7 gives protection against the effects of temporary immersion in water of a depth between 15 centimetres and 1 metre, and finally level 8, the highest protection, uh, it gives protection against long periods of immersion up to a maximum depth specified by the manufacturer. Now it is quite clearly stated in the Zero Owner's Manual that you should not use any powerful hose or jet wash to clean the bike. It actually advises only hand washing using a bucket and sponge or similar. And to be fair that's good advice with standard motorcycles, standard petrol bikes, but jet washing can cause water intrusion into switches, into bearings, it can wash out oil in your chain, it can cause various damage to the bike which is going to cause you longer term problems. But with the Zero obviously it's particularly sensitive being an elect a very electrical based device uh, to any kind of water ingress into electrical components. It's, it's going to be something that's particularly risky. But it does strike me there are a couple of options. One is the IP rating on the charger could be improved or Zero could source an alternative which has a higher IP rating. And the second option, or rather to put it another way, the question is why is there a large gap behind the charger? Is that to allow cooling while the bike's charging? Possibly. It's, got, it's a fairly low power, you know, 1300 watts is not going to produce a huge amount of heat, I wouldn't have thought. Now maybe it's worth producing some kind of cover which could be put in that location just behind the charger while one's washing the bike to stop any kind of water ingress in the first place. And I think it is water ingress that's causing the shorting in the chargers. And obviously as a rider in the UK, water's something we have to put up with. It's just the nature of the beast. Now the bikes are from California, slightly nicer climate more generally. So maybe it's a factor in you know that the home market is a drier climate and therefore uh, concern about water vulnerability is less less of an issue but the issue with these chargers has caused owners to consider other options and that's something zero needs to be very aware about and they are now one of these options is an aftermarket charger or chargers made by a company called diginow did you know it's the brainchild of Brandon Nozaki Miller in the US? Brandon is a bit of an electronics whiz kid. As uh, somebody who races electric motorcycles, he found that there was nothing on the market that would charge fast enough for him, so he put his own mind to coming up with something that would meet his needs. After working fairly closely with Brandon's friend Terry Hirschner, Terry is a renowned uh, electric motorcycle tourer in the US, Brandon's come up with the DigiNow version 2.5 charger. The standard DigiNow charging bricks are 3.3 kilowatts and they take up about a third of the space taken up by the stock charger. So for two extra kilowatts you're taking up a third of the space. 
And there's also an option to buy a 10 kilowatt unit, so as one unit, to fit in the same space occupied by the standard stock charger, albeit with a slightly uh, deeper supercharger belly pan. But it fits effectively in the same space as a stock charger. 10 kilowatt charging instead of 1.3 kilowatts. That's quite something. But that's not all. The DigiNow chargers are IP rated at IP67, which means in terms of solid object ingress, like stock chargers, they are completely dust tight. But in terms of water ingress, they're two levels up. Uh, they're actually protected against the effects of temporary immersion in water of a depth between 15 centimeters and one meter. So you could happily ride uh, a Zero containing a DigiNow charger through a Ford, for instance, and suffer no ill effects. And with 10 kilowatts on board, I'd be looking at a zero to 80% charge in around 40 minutes. And suddenly the bike becomes quite a viable touring machine. And DigiNow is only a very small operation. And given the increasing demand for the chargers, they're going through a process at the moment of trying to ramp up production through uh, produ moving to production to China, actually. It's the only really viable and sensible way they can they can move to produce these charges in any kind of scale. So all of this has got me thinking. My finance package on the bike I own, on this Zero DSR, is up in June. And at that point I can decide to keep the bike and pay off the balance. Or chop it in as, as part of a deposit on a new Zero. Or I could just walk away and take the money and that's it. Now the third of those is not going to happen, you know. I I love riding the Zero bike. It's it's a fantastic bike. Charging problems aside, you know, that's nothing to do with the bike itself. It's ironic that the the one part of the bike which is which has nothing to do with the actual mechanics of the bike riding is actually the weak point. Of course, it's all very well having an aftermarket charging option manufactured in the United States or possibly in China, but ultimately originating in the United States. But what does that mean for an owner like me, somebody who is a bit of a novice? Uh, I'm not the kind of person that would happily pull apart an electric motorcycle and play around with it myself. I'd probably end up killing myself. So what options are there for somebody like me? Well, back in November, I attended a motorcycle live show in Birmingham. And uh, it was nice to meet up with uh, Dale Robinson, who is the UK country manager of Zero. Once again, uh, Dale's been great he's I've met him uh, I think three times now he was very supportive of my um, my ride from Land's End to John O'Groats and then up to score at the top of Shetland and in fact featured it on the first newsletter he put together so always good to to meet up with Dale but also in attendance on the stand was Alec Sharp of English Electric Motor Company Alec it transpires is heading up the Soul at the moment importer of DigiNow chargers. So I had quite a good chat with Alec as well about the dilemmas I've got in terms of what I'm going to do in June, you know, whether I'm going to upgrade the bike, whether I'm going to retrofit some DigiNow chargers. And uh, they're down in Suffolk, English Electric Motors Company, so it's very possible that I will be going down there later on this year and, well, having a DigiNow charger installed. Looking at the current pricing on English Electric Motor Company's website, it looks like the 9.9 kilowatt setup is coming in at £2,700 excluding VAT. Contrasted with the 3.3 kilowatt setup at £1,500 and the 6.6 .6 at £2,000. No prizes for guessing which one I'd be interested in. The other option that would be open to me would be to have a charge tank retrofitted onto my bike. Now that's an option that wasn't available until relatively recently. Initially, when I bought my bike, the option was to have a charge tank fitted at the time of factory manufacture, or not. And given the cost of them, they're around £2,500 when I bought mine, it really wasn't worth it, given that it, was, it added 3.3 kilowatts charging 
possibility to the bike. I couldn't really justify that in my own head. You know, that's effectively fast charging on a car for an extra £2,500. Fast charging as opposed to rapid, for those not familiar. You know, rap rapid charging is the um, charge your car in 30 minutes, 40 minutes. It's 3.3 is still going to be relatively slow. Now, subsequently, there's been uh, a 6.6 .6 charge tank available for the Zero, and that is now available for my bike, the 2016 model, uh, to be retrofitted. However, I suspect it's not going to be competitive when put up against the DigiNow charger. The flip side of that, of course, is one is a manufacturer officially approved item, and the other is an aftermarket third-party product. But that's just one of those decisions you have to make. At that stage, the bike will be paid off and it will be mine. The bike itself will actually be out of warranty. The, war the standard warranty is for the motorcycle is two years. But interestingly, the power pack warranty is five years or 100,000 miles. So in, in actual fact, the power pack will still be under warranty. Now, the issue of warranty is a thorny issue and comes up in discussions time and time again. But the simple reality, both in the US and certainly in Europe, is that... Um, Manufacturers can't require that branded parts only be used on a product in order to retain a warranty. And did you now do in fact cover themselves and hopefully calm any concerns by offering to cover any repair costs to the bike if for any reason a properly installed did you now charger causes any damage to the bike or battery during the warranty period. Alternatively, I may just go for a new zero all these dilemmas I've got to think about over the next few months. At this point I just want to give a mention to Sam Baker who's the guy behind the New Zero Land channel on YouTube. Uh, Sam's based in New Zealand and together with his friends Tim Jackson and Jeff Evan the three of them uh, have put together some great material on on Sam's channel on New Zero Land. What's truly impressive is there is no Zero dealer in New Zealand so the guys themselves have, have done all the work on the bikes together with a friend, Patrick, and it's quite it's quite funny to watch the various charging setups and all the trials and tribulations, you know, trying different cable setups, trying different charger setups, but the fundamental core of it all is using the DigiNow platform for the charging. And um, Jeff, in fact, Jeff Evan, is planning to do uh, an end-to-end -end trip similar to the one I did in the UK, Obviously, he's going to be doing it in New Zealand. Unfortunately for Jeff, he's going to have an easier time than I did in terms of charging, thanks to his setup. So yeah, go and take a look at Sam's channel, New Zero Land. It's absolutely brilliant, well worth a watch. So, early January, and the bike's back with a new charger replaced. And credit to Street Bike, well, and Zero in the UK. They've... Um, Replace the charger. God, that's a good angle on it. Yeah, replace the charger. It's happily charging away as it goes at the moment. Just been out for a nice little jaunt. They've replaced it within about a week. There's obviously a knowledge about the weakness of these of these stock chargers. I can only assume. I know a lot of owners have made the same assumption uh, that you know Zero is a small company and they've probably got a whole load of those stock chargers that. Uh, they need to get through but um, I suspect in the not too distant future they will be looking at an alternative to the Calyx because it can't it can't really go on like that it's a bit unsustainable it's good at the moment because of obviously all of the the fact is a lot of us are early adopters to the technology and we put up with the hiccups almost treat the chargers the Calyx chargers like a almost like a consumable long term that's not really a, a good option a good viable option and with digi now in the market with chargers that will charge at a, fa a much faster rate and with in much less space i could see them making the switch i could see them approaching digi now in the not too distant future and um making a deal uh, i've heard nothing official to that effect it's just it's just putting two and two together thinking what would be a sensible thing to do in, in zero shoes and Digi now have now built up a quite a good reputation with owners so I think that's the way to go anyway I'm, I'm quite pleased like I say under a week that was a good turnaround from street bike credits to zero in the UK for obviously keeping the Calic chargers at short lead times effectively so 
there's obviously a stock of them available, readily available now, rather than the old. There was there used to be a long wait for one of those chargers, and I know because I've had three of them go in the in the total of two and a half years. I'd say a prime requirement of a charger on a motorcycle is that it should be waterproof or at least very water resistant. Um, it might be the water in the UK that's having an effect, uh, but I know of quite a few people who've had the chargers go on them. Anyway, like I say, yeah, it's all good. Bike's working lovely. Had a really nice ride out on it again. Still a happy zero owner. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.